Many of the nations of Central and Eastern Europe have spent most of their history as components of one empire or another. People in this region are used to being at the receiving end of directives and planning from the center. Though ostensibly fervid nationalists, they are ill at ease with their refounded and refound nation states. The identity of the denizens of these parts is more regional than national and evolving towards the supranational. People are from this or that city or district or village, and they aspire to become citizens of Europe, and the great experiment of the European Union. They are only hesitantly and tentatively Macedonians, or Moldovans, or Belarusians, uh, Belarusians, or Kazakhs, or Yugoslavs. The likes of the Czechs, the Estonians and the Slovenes are well suited to become constituents of a larger whole. They make better Europeans than the British or the Norwegians. They have survived far mightier and more bloated bureaucracies than Brussels. They are unsurpassed manipulators of officialdom. In the long run, the new members stand to benefit the most from the EU's enlargement and to form its unwaveringly loyal core. Not yet the full-fledged individuals or individualists of the Anglo-Saxon model of capitalism, these nations are consensus-seeking team players. Tutored by centuries of occupation and hardship, they are instinctual multilateralists. They are avid Westerners by persuasion, if not yet in practice or geography.